Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and this is a really, really special edition. I'm chuffed. It's one of my cult heroes uh, who I've got the pleasure of being joined by on this show. He's a former Arsenal goalkeeper, former double winner. He also played in the Serie A, went on to win the Serie A title with Juventus, represented a number of other big clubs, including Liverpool. It's the brilliant Alex Manninga. Alex, welcome to the show, mate. Delighted to have you. Hi, hi to everyone. Thank you. The, the pleasure is all ours, I can tell you. I'm I'm so chuffed about this and really, really looking forward to it. Um, Alex, I was saying to you off air that I was one of the kids at school that wanted to see more of Alex Manninger during the 97-98 season. Um, always felt like you were kind of really pushing David Seaman hard. And, and then that's not easy to do because he was a great goalkeeper. Um, what was it like sort of playing alongside somebody like David Seaman and basically having to snap at his heels to try and take his position in the side. Exactly, yeah. Obviously, coming from abroad, from Austria, with just about 20 years, it was a big thing to ask in these days, you know. End of 90s, there was no navigation in the car, there was the mobile phone was still a different one. <laughs> so, you had no examples. I always tell to friends, I was one of the the first guys, obviously the first Austrian who went to the Premier League, then obviously the, one of the first players who went abroad as well. So you had a lot of things new. You didn't have someone who did it before, you always had to experience it yourself. And uh, that made me definitely stronger and it made definitely uh, an adult person out of me very early. But as you said, uh, uh, Sport, sportive wise, I had one of the great goalies in this time in front of me, David Seaman. And I'm always still uh, having contact, uh, not as much anymore, but uh, it's, it, it was something I really look back and say, I worked with one of the best goalies in the world. So was a lot of players, but as you say, I came to substitute David for quite a lot of times and uh, share trophies and share uh, games or periods in the season where you look back now and, and say, look, we did it together. And uh, I'm still looking up for that and um, I'm proud of my four years of Arsenal. And uh, obviously, yeah, the wish is always play more, play for longer. But I'm happy with what I did and uh, I'm happy even 20, over 20 years later with what we've done. You've played for some some great clubs as well throughout your career. Aside from Arsenal, you were at Liverpool, you were at Juventus, uh, Torino, just to name a few. Obviously, you played in Austria. How high up that list do Arsenal rank in terms of you know your your favourites and and the kind of period of that period of your career? I think right on top because it was my first club abroad. I was just just turned twenty, I think, and as I said, it was a different twenty year old moving to another country, moving to a huge club as Arsenal were already in these days. So uh, I think for me, I just got introduced to the top league football, top European football. And uh, having a manager like Arsene Wenger, he was already ahead with all these things, you know, uh, nutrition, food, uh, pre preparation for the games, traveling. He was such a, a, a perfect manager to, to be able to focus and experience that in early days in your career. I think it helped me through all out my career because I just finished with 40, so a few years ago. And I always look back to these time, times and days to Arsenal where, where I definitely got something for all the way till, till I was 40. Yeah? Fantastic. What, what did you make of kind of the way sort of the, the Arsenal fan base seemingly turned on Arsene Wenger? Because as somebody who, as you've said, you know, he helped you along. He he had such a big influence on so many players' careers. As an ex-player, it must have been difficult to watch that and, and see it all unfold. Definitely. And probably as a goalkeeper, it's a little bit harder again because not every manager knows exactly the the goalkeeping situation, you know, now they are, of course, better, but now every manager has 
six, eight, ten staff was looked after every role nearly. And uh, but this was the strength of of Arsene Wenger. He was uh, very generous. He was very balanced with that. He treated all the players similar. And of course, he had his stars and his players what changed games. And then he had the, the younger players where he definitely looked after them. But maybe sometimes it was a bit more difficult to accept. He was under pressure. He needed to get results and all that. And obviously, he might have chosen a couple of times rather David and Goal than me in certain times, in certain periods, because he, he, he went for guarantee. And looking back now, he definitely didn't do wrong. And uh, maybe yeah, it cost me the odd game, both successfully or uh, winning, uh, winning wise, he, he took the right decision. Yeah? He made the right decision. L looking at Arsenal now from 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 Austria, watching on, looking back at your former club, a club that you clearly have a lot of passion for. You that that's come across already. We've only been talking for six minutes, and I can tell um, the club's almost unrecognisable now, though, isn't it? It's is fallen a long way. Uh, there is a lot of unrest among the fans at the moment. Do you think you know? First of all, let's let's talk about Mikel Arteta. Do you think that he is the man to guide the club back to where they need to be? Because there's a lot of doubt about that now. Unfortunately, yeah. Actually, in the beginning of the season, last season, you could see he had some input. He had a couple of changes. They said goodbye to a couple of big players. They probably said goodbye to the strategy they had for a few years. They took very expensive players for a short period of time. So, actually, it wasn't the opposite. It was the opposite what Arsene Wenger did for, for years and years and years to get. 20, 22 year old players, make them good. They were good already when they come, when they join Arsenal, but make them good at the club, have a chance of reaching things and obviously having a chance of making money. What is these days, it's, it's fundamental to make money with your players. And I think this was a little bit missed out the last few years. So the great transfers for Arsenal costed money. So they didn't make this, this extra money out of the players. So even this year again, I think they spent nearly, I think one of the most in the Premier League again. So it is a big target to, to get this right. But I think it's, 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 it's fundamental. It's necessary in modern football now. And it can be, Ateta, it can be the guy to change it. He made the market now, he made the squad now, he bought younger players. But as you said, with Arsenal, you, you're not accepted being last after three games now. Unfortunately, it hurts everyone and even more someone who is close to the club. So they need to change soon. I hope he gets the time because it's, it's, it's worth getting the time, but the results will tell the answer. Yeah? Were you surprised that he got the job? Because I was one of the people who was very kind of, I, I wasn't, not that I don't, I didn't want him and I was really upset and angry about it, but he wouldn't have been my first choice. But once he was appointed, I think he said all the right things. I think he looked as though he was, you know, he had the right ideas. It hasn't really materialised though. Were you surprised looking on and, and remembering how Arsenal were sort of during your day and thinking, I can't believe they've they've taken such a big gamble? You're right. It's that if you look through, if you look back now and say two years ago, what was the, the options? You probably could you could discuss today over it. But you took someone on who knew he knew the, the Premier League, he played for Everton, he knew he knew the English football, he knew the style, he knew the clubs, he knew he knows modern football. You probably take this risk. You have a, a modern manager himself, he's not old, so He's ambitious, he wants to improve, but as I said, you don't have a lot of time for these changes, so you need to be quick. And as you said, now not even a month gone, you wasted a lot of time, really. You spent a lot of money, you started the games bad. So you need to react. It, it probably gives you another three months to say, look, can he make the, the difference? Can he make the change they planned for probably six months to a year, probably? 
well, you need to you need to react because if you in three weeks still last, you have to react because Arsenal is. I would say Arsenal without European football, it's a different club. It's a different uh, support. I can understand the, the the fans to to ask that and to really to ask for it because they they do a big part of it. And if you spend this much amount of money. If you give it all the respective time, you need to see the result. Otherwise, you need to to doubt with what you did. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of Arsenal fans are frustrated with the owners of the club at the moment that, you know, people talk about the money they've spent and, and that's fair enough. But it feels as though they are a little bit detached from the club. You know, they I know they're in America. They, they don't attend games often. They do now and again, but there feels like there's a big disconnect. Would you say that it's, you know, looking at the club from when you were there, would you say that the board at that time were, were solely focused on winning? And can you see the differences between the Cronkies now and the guys that were running the club then? Definitely. That could be a point because it happens to other clubs. And the outcome is different because you've got the Manchester is run by Americans, Liverpool is run by Americans, but you have a different background probably and this is what it makes a difference yeah because you said this close when you had uh, david miles when you had ken fryer when you had the the chairman's scene every week every game they were in the stadium and all you felt the strength you felt the strength of the club you felt yeah maybe the family you you, you felt the owner close to you as a player and this could be a good point that it's missing now because even the manager doesn't know sometimes who do I ask where where are they what what is it to ask for who is my man to ask so it's a it's a big thing it's a big thing and I, I totally agree with you it could be a big thing this this the direct contact is a bit too far away and it goes over corners and it's never good if you if you waste too much time with uh, logistics or distancing because you, you you lose the dynamic what you need sometimes especially in football and uh, i think where, where liverpool did well obviously having the coach right and the surroundings right they have much closer decision times and this is probably especially in a market uh, when you have to do a new squad to build up six eight six uh, new arrivals you need to make sure you have short distances and that's probably a bit the problem where you lose out the the dynamic of a of a, of a, a family but let's put it this way where you have shorter distances and, and yeah closer decisions mm. and also as we mentioned already you spent some time at liverpool do you feel like at Liverpool in modern years, the, the fans or the owners of the club, and I, I don't even I don't even think it's the same ownership at Liverpool as when you were there, but did you feel like Liverpool were better at managing that relationship with the fans in terms because it feels like they're always a lot more on board than the Arsenal fans are with Arsenal's ownership? You probably had the right example now. What it is, it's probably in Liverpool at the moment, four years ago, I was there, some part is still the same, obviously the running part, the, the daily part is still the same. They're closer, they're closer to the fans, they're closer to the players, and you feel that, you feel every percentage of this strength you feel. And this is what you say probably has gone missing at Arsenal at the moment. We want to we wanna see the, the shermans in the stadium again, we want to see a manager who knows this is my squad i chosen from the kid man to the doctor to the smallest player to the oldest player so you want this unit you want this uh, yeah i keep saying family but I, you want this intact structure in the club yeah and this is probably what i'm missing a bit and the, the supporter shows you what he feels and when you on a saturday when there's sixty thousand in the emirates they feel Probably this closeness drifted away a little bit. And as you said, you've got the manager down there who is in doubt. You've got the owners, you don't even know where they are at the moment. You've got the new players in, you don't even know who decided that they are that they came. So it's a lot of questions that the support that the fan says, yeah, who should I cheer for now? Is it the owner because he's not here? Is it the manager who is already struggling? 
Or is it the player? I don't even know because he's not playing. So questioning, like you said, it's very, very unbalanced. That's feel like maybe the right word, unbalanced. You've got players here, very good players, high pay, big transfer fees. They don't give you the last 5% anymore. So you need to make sure you substitute it at least the same or in my opinion better and this is what the, the big question is for doing markets there is there is great people i still hear of steve Rowley, who just retired now who picked the, the team from 97 98 and he did a great job and he was there for another 20 years and 10 years before so he was he was part of the history of, of arsenal you need a steve Rowley again to to make arsenal who they were yeah, it feels like the identity of the club's been lost a little bit. And when things are going wrong, as you said, it's very difficult to to know who to blame. Is it the manager? Well, partly, but it's not solely the manager. Is it the ownership? Partly, but it's not solely the ownership. Is it the players? And again, that kind of the lack of structure makes it really difficult to actually pinpoint where the problem is at Arsenal Football Club at the moment. And that's what's really frustrating as a fan. Talking about some of the transfer business that we've done this summer, one of the big deals that Arsenal did was bringing in another goalkeeper. Aaron Ramsdale was signed for the club uh, from Sheffield United for around a about £25 million in total. Were you surprised that given Arsenal need to, you know, sort out so many different positions in the team that they spent so much on a goalkeeper who isn't going to be the number one straight away? Well, I think it's a bit the market as well now. It's a bit the market, the time in modern football you need to spend for young players. Now you need to spend a lot of money. I don't want to say a different word to it, but it's it's a lot of money, like you said, who is not playing and who knows when the time is right. But I remember when Ben Leno came to the club, uh, Peter Cech was still in goal and he had to wait, I think, nearly a season. And then he took over Peter Cech and he was already a lot of money in his days. So I think Aaron is, is 21, 22. So he's got, he's got a lot of years in front of him. So this is not a problem of bringing him in next Saturday. But you're right, you need to, you need to sacrifice. You need to, you need to give, the, give the, the, the investment a name. Was it right? Is it right? Otherwise, people will ask again. The supporter will ask, was it, was it time? Was it now? Was it needed to do it now? So you need, to, you need to make sure you can get the right players on the pitch to show, look, this is a future project and not something for next Saturday. Because I, I rate Bernd Lane a bit. I rate him still big because he's in his best age of, of, of modern football. And that's what he is. He's a modern goalkeeper. But also he needs to have the the construction, the whole team working for him, because otherwise it's 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 been in Manchester. The Ikea was out. Now he comes back. He's one of the best uh, goalies as as ever he's been. So there is uh, always uh, spells in a team, and probably Arsenal. I hope it changes soon again. But the start wasn't a good spell. We have to say that and. It doesn't help Bernd Lehner, it doesn't help the defence, it doesn't help the coach and it doesn't help the owner who, is, who spend a lot of money to, to see probably a different result. But future-wise, I think the idea is good, but you need to produce, you need to get the results right. I would say in the next, it's now the week off because of international, in the next three weeks you need to see, look, this is the right way we're going, otherwise you need to, you need to question, it's normal, you need to question. I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. If the results don't improve dramatically in the next 3 weeks or so, would you pull the trigger on Mikel Arteta or do you feel like it's still too early in the season? Because this is a big debate we've been having. How long should he get before we we make that change? Definitely the right question, yeah. You need to question and I'm sure people will. The thing is you should give him now these 10 days of work with the players he got in. But then I would say, I don't have the schedule in my head, no. you should give him another three, four games, and then you need to feel, you need to see this game, this team can win games. If you don't have this feeling, 
I'm sure there will be people on the market as well. There are coaches already on the market, but you need to get the dynamic right because if you don't get it in, let's say, two months, you don't get it in six months. And you know, the big club with Arsenal, you don't have time six months. You, you rather be in the first eight, six, hopefully, or you'll be somewhere uh, down the middle of the line and that you, you don't want to. And this is with or without a coach or a player. I don't even so, say the player is uh, the coach is the only responsible for the results. But like you said, Arsenal brought players in. They're playing a team at the moment, but if they don't get it right in three to four weeks, you have to think about your squad as well. Yeah? Because it, it works, in my opinion, it works all together. You know, you need the you need the, the financial possibilities what Arsenal had. They spent a lot of money. They spend it on good players. So you need a coach who gets the good players together. But if some of those wheels are not spinning right or something, you need to question. And that's definitely the, within three, four weeks time to to start, to definitely look at with with honest eyes through through glasses with uh, with an honest opinion, because otherwise uh, Arsenal won't be happy. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think as much as you know, we as fans want to get behind the team, want to get behind the manager, you cannot ignore what is going on at the club right now. You know, we talk about at the time of recording, we are bottom of the league. And mm. while I'm not kind of sitting here, you know, in August worrying about relegation or anything like that, because we have played Chelsea and we have played Manchester City, it's almost an embarrassment on the club. And, and when you think about how we were complaining about where we were finishing fourth every season, to now be at this point just shows the the decline. Uh, and another thing I wanted to get your opinion on as an ex-pro and, and, you know, the fact that you played uh, until the age that you did shows that you were incredibly professional, took care of yourself really, really well. What have you made of things like, you know, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang turning up late for the North London derby, Ainsley Maitland-Niles taking to social media to make his feelings known about wanting to leave the club? This kind of stuff just feels as though it's happening too often under Mikel Arteta. Is there a concern from your point about the, the kind of attitude of a lot of this dressing room? 100% right. 100% right because I know Arsenal. I know Arsene Wenger. I know the structure with Tony Adams in the changing rooms with Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn, Dennis Bergkamp. You have all the professionals. Later on, Patrick Vieira, the youngish French, what took over after. Terry O'Ree, they were captains, they were leaders, they were hungry for success. I think this is a good point what Arsenal lack in the last few years with all this. I don't want to see any, any single thing what happens, but like you said, you don't want this Ozil problems for years, you don't want this Chaka problems for years, you don't want this Alba Mayang problems for years. It can happen. Everyone can have a bad day. But you need the structure right. You need your to be, you need your leader to lead, to be an example. And I don't think that happened with Arsenal. They didn't have the right captain in the last few years. They didn't have, like you said, the changing room right for the last few years. There was probably a lot of jealousy. There was a lot of questioning. Ozil playing or not, captain or not, Chaka playing or not, captain or not. So I think everyone who came in the morning said, where is my leader? Where is where is the structure of the club, what this kind of club always had? And you're right, as a young player, you think you're at Arsenal, but you don't feel it. You don't go into the changing room with goosebumps. That's what I had for four years when I changed myself before training or even more in a game because it was something special. And I think this is missing at the moment. You need to get your changing room right again. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a big thing. It is a massive thing. And mm -hmm. it's kind of where, you know, I've, I, I've probably come across as though I'm, I'm quite keen to see Mikel Arteta go. I don't think that he is, is going to turn this around. I've got to be honest, but I do have a lot of sympathy for him with situations like that. A lot of these players that are at the football club were there long before he arrived, were doing these kind of things long before he arrived. But 
as an ex-player, how important to you is is your manager getting the man management side right? Because it does look like, you know, Maitland-Niles, Gwenduzi sent away, William Saliba sent away. It does look like this keeps happening with Mikel Arteta. So do you think that that's something that maybe looking from the outside, he, he maybe needs to improve on as a coach? You're right. You made examples like what you said as well. Uh, liking him or dislike him, uh, he's got the chance in one of the biggest clubs in Europe. It's a little bit up to him now to make something out of it. They had, he was put in in a situation maybe with less pressure. He made, he did reasonably. He didn't win anything, but he was there. But now he had the first year probably to spend money, to set his own team together. Uh, it's a little bit up to him now to show it, to show the faith what he got to show to us, to show to us supporters, to show to us former players, to show to us uh, everyone watching Arsenal. You want to see probably a leader in the manager as well now to say, look, this is the way I play football with those players I chosen. And then you need to see it on the result because otherwise, like you said, liking him, not liking him, you need to question him and say, is he the right guy? So I'm 100% agreeing on that to see make him give him another chance but then you need to to balance him to say look is he the future because otherwise you need to of course you need to question the players he took if the football he made is not the one you need to question with the things he chose yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely i just wanted to ask you uh one final question alex before i start uh throwing a few just a few quick fire ones uh at you I know you, you went to Serie A and you played uh, for a number of years there. I'm a huge, huge Serie A fan. Outside of Arsenal, it's probably what I take the most interest in. I watch it every week. I do a podcast on that as well. Uh, and I'm curious to know what the kind of cultural differences you found were when you ended up playing in Italy. It's a, It feels to me like a completely different world. Is that accurate? Uh, there is something on it, yeah. But I think what I realized in 22 years of football, 20 years abroad from Austria, uh, every country, every league has his trend. You know, now, now you, you you look to the UK and you think it's the the best football ever. But if you look back 10 years ago in Italy, where all the good players, all the stars, all the 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 Vieras, all the you know. World champ 2006 in Italy was uh, world champion as well, so that helps a lot. Now England had the good European Championship; they've got future ahead of them. So 2014 Germany was one of those countries you want to be in because you had the, you, you won the title. You had every stadium full. This area at the moment suffers, but I can see picking up again. Stadium getting better, fuller, but still it's far away from from. England or even Germany, you've got such a, a clean football with, with new stadiums, uh, full grounds, you know, the stadiums are yeah. full. And Italy needs this again. They probably need a tournament to, to, to obviously nicen a few stadiums, but yeah. they need some spirit again to see like, look, this is us, this is players. They need to come to Italy again, like it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, everyone wants to play in Italy. Now everyone wants to play in the UK. So it's a big trend at the moment, UK-wise, but I can see Italy, Italy picking up again. And hopefully soon, because again, like England has four, five, six teams for the, for the championship, because the last nine years, except of last year, was Juventus was not to, to take on. Yeah? And uh, last year it was Inter. This year again, it will be quite a close race. So. That's what football needs, definitely. It needs more teams competitive. Yeah, yeah for sure. Just a few uh, quick fire questions, Alex. Won't keep you yeah. uh, for too much longer. Uh, so I just want to know who, in your opinion, off the top of your head, was the best player you ever played with? I go back to my Arsenal time and going there fresh with just turned 20, Dennis Bergkamp. To see someone already a few years older, experience with tournaments, playing for the, the Dutch uh, national team and playing for for Ajax 
Inter Milan and Arsenal, then he was, in my opinion, the first complete football in European football. So I'm really proud of to, to have him in my team and to watch him for a few years because it was something I still look back. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, what about the best player that you ever played against? Who did you come up against and think, oh my God? Against? Uh, <laughs> there is, that's probably the easier question because with some I played against and with. And then I have to look to Italy. Obviously, I was 10 years in the Serie A and I was not so happy when I played against Del Piero, Trezeguet, Nedved. And I was happy to play a few years later with Juventus with all those players together again. So it worked both ways, but there was especially yeah, the couple of French players, uh, Trezeguet, against bad, with him good. Or even then in the end, the Italian players, Del Piero, Pavel Nedved, the Czech player. I, I definitely was not happy to play against them, but a few <laughs> years later I played with them. And it made us winning a few games, yeah, made us win a few games. Fantastic. And finally, what was your favourite Arsenal match? I think I know which one you're going to pick. Or well, for me, it's out of two, but I, I wanna, I'm interested to know what you're going to say. I have to go back to my first season as well. There was actually two, but two different competitions. One, it needs to, it has to be the one Manchester United away, 1 0. Mark Obama's score. Yep. <laughs> and definitely the one in the, in the FA Cup against West Ham, we won in penalties. So they, it's probably the only two games I remember out of my 22 year career, but <laughs> this is something special. I, I share it as a, as a fan, as a, former player, I definitely look back sometimes and I, I'm i happy to be part of those games. So. Yeah, those, those are the two I would have picked as well. So uh, glad to see we're on the same page. Yeah. Uh, Alex, thank you so, so much, man. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you coming on and uh, I'm sure the listeners will appreciate it too. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.